So we've discussed the concepts of scaling as well as weighting and we've also discussed that uh, it makes sense to first scale the variables and then apply the appropriate weights to them. So let's, uh, let's see the different methods of scaling that are there. Um, and uh, let's also understand why we, uh, we need scaling in clustering. So see, uh, clustering is basically a, a geometrical concept and in geometry all dimensions are equally Im important. So two points that differ by two in dimensions x and y are, uh, are the same distance apart as two other points that differ by two in dimensions y and z. It doesn't matter what units x, y and z are measured in so long as they are the same. But what if x, y and z were measured in very different units? For example, if x was measured in yards and y was measured in centimeters and z was measured in nautical miles. Now a difference of 1 in z is equivalent to a distance of 2025 in x because of the difference in these scales. So clearly they must all be converted to a common scale before distances will make any sense. Unfortunately, in commercial data mining, there is usually no common scale available because the different units being used are measuring quite different things. So for example, if we have variables like size of a plot of land, number of children, um, number of cars owned and family income, they cannot all be converted to a common unit because they are just measuring very different things. On the other hand, it is misleading that a difference of 20 acres is considered same or considered indistinguishable from a change of uh, $20, right? A difference of 20 acres is very different from a difference of $20 because they are very different scales. So one solution is to map all the variables to a common range, often from 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1. That way, at least the ratios of change become comparable. You know, so doubling the plot size has the same effect as doubling the income. So uh, that's, uh, that's just one of the ways that we solve the problem of scaling and clustering. Uh, let's look at three uh, commonly used methods for sc scaling variables to bring them all into comparable ranges. So uh, let's look, uh, before we do that, let's look at the two variables that we are uh, analyzing here. We've got the income variable and we've got the number of children variable. Uh, now, if you, if you look at uh, the ranges here, uh, income varies from 10,000 to 38,000 while number of children varies from 1 to 4. So vastly different uh, ranges, the things they are trying to measure are very different. So uh, let's, uh, let's look at the first way of, uh, of scaling these variables to bring them into a similar range. Um, the first method is to divide each variable by the range after subtracting the lowest value. So what what we mean is uh, let's look at the income variable first we've got a range of what's the lowest value here 10,000 and the highest value is 38,000 so we've got a range from 10,000 to 38,000 or a range of 28,000 right 38,000 minus 10,000 which is 28,000 and the lowest value is 10,000 right so now what we do is uh, let's uh, let's take this value of the first record income is 10,000 so we take income of 10,000 we divide m subtract the lowest value which is also 10,000 and we divide this by 28,000 which is the range right in this case what will it be 0 divided by 28,000 which is 0 hence the scaled value is zero here you can see the scale value for this same record is zero let's look at the the second one we've got 12,000 right we subtract the lowest value value which is 10,000 and we divide by 28,000 which becomes what 2,000 by 28,000 which is close to less than equal less than 0.1 but rounded off to 0.1 right and that's what we see here 0.1 is the scale value of this variable. So similarly, we can do the same exercise for number of children. And now you can see both of these variables have a similar scale, right? 
the maximum is 1 and the minimum is 0 in both the cases the maximum is 1 and the minimum is 0 so we've mapped these variables to a scale where they have a value between 0 to 1 right so this is one method of uh, of scaling the variables another method that we can use is divide each variable by the mean of the values it takes on okay so let's look at the income variable again if we look at all the records the mean value of uh, income is 19800 now what we do is simply take each of these records so we take 10000 first and we divide it by the mean 19800 right which is very close to 0.5 so the new value for this variable is 0.5 the scaled value Right. Similarly, we do it for uh, for everything. Let's uh, do the same for this variable here, this record. So the value is the value of the record is thirty-eight thousand, and we divide it by the mean, which is nineteen thousand eight hundred, and we have a value of close to two or one point nine and so we have the scale value of 1.9 here right so this is another method of scaling the the variables uh, now let's look at the third method this is also called normalization of variables or uh, z scoring of uh, variables converting them to z scores this is the most commonly used uh, method and in most cases this is also the most uh, most appropriate method in this case what we do is subtract the mean from each variable and then divide it by the standard deviation so let's let's understand what we are trying to do here okay so we have this distribution here and we have a mean value right and we have say a record which has a say the mean is equal to 10 and we have a record here which is at 20 right so what we do is first we subtract the mean from each variable so 20 minus 10 and then we divide it by the standard deviation so what is 20 minus 10 20 minus 10 is basically how far the value is from the mean of of the distribution right and then when we divide it by the standard deviation what we are basically saying is how many standard deviations away is a value from the mean right so basically z score tells us how many standard deviations away the from the mean a value is right and in clustering what uh, how will that uh, how will that translate what that means is the further away the value is from uh, from the mean in terms of standard deviations the more abnormal that value is considered by the clustering algorithm so we'll we'll see how we use this method in the case study that uh, that that will follow later and uh, uh, so for for the time being let's just remember these three methods of scaling